My name is Michelle. I'm 55. I've lived in poverty for over 11 years and I've been married for 19 years. Um, and during that period, my husband got diagnosed with bipolar, had to stop working, and I then worked part-time to keep us financially semi-buoyant, <laughs> which isn't, isn't quite right, but because I was working, we were unable to claim free school meals or anything like that. We didn't have that sort of backup, so it was becoming a real struggle, although we had help. We slowly sort of saw things falling away and we had our own home at the time. And that got to the stage where we couldn't afford to pay that. So the mortgage company were gonna rep repossess our house. And we, we were basically gonna be homeless. Um, so we started the process of, of going to the council and asking for help. Um, the gentleman that we spoke to, he had no time to talk to us or listen to what we were going through, which was devastating. And a gentleman who was homeless was standing outside and he said to us, they were looking to move him into a flat. And he said to us, he said, you could have our, my house. You can go in there. And that was so lovely of him. But on that particular visit, we spoke to a lady this time and her attitude to us was totally different. It was more open, she listened to our circumstances. She, she gave us that hope that, that something good was gonna come out of this. Within three months, they had offered us a house, which was amazing. And we were really surprised, but elated by, by the fact that we were gonna have this week. We were gonna have a new house and we were moved, we moved in within about three weeks of being told that the house was ready for us. And my son now, who was 13, and which was an important time for him as he was starting to do his GCS, getting ready for GCSEs and he knew what was going on and we'd explained the cir circumstances to him so he had a good idea of how, as a family, we were financially sort of situated. And he was really good. He never asked for anything. He never wanted anything. The only thing he did want was the phone, but we explained we couldn't afford it. Whereas all his other friends had phones and they, they, although he felt a bit um, left out and none of the children actually picked on him or bullied him or anything. My father, passed away then last year and part of that 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 support was has gone and I was devastated. My dad was the person that would say, do you need some money to 
are you okay and things like that. Well, now it's my mother on her own and she's 91. So I help my sister who has given up her job, um, be working on Antarctic cruise ships and come home to look after my mum. So I help her out in between looking at being Steve's carer and have to travel from Birchgrove to, to Brim Mill to look after mum, make sure she's got everything and also balance my family life, which is really hard. The DWP with my, not just with my husband and and his um, pep, but also trying to get organized things and, and sort things out with the DWP for my mother as well. This, this, there seems to be no understanding when, when you have to constantly ring different departments within the same organization and you feel stupid because you think, well, maybe I'm not saying the right things to people because you're repeating yourself constantly from each person that you have to speak to. There seems to be no communication at all. My son is turning, has, is 18. He will be going to university come September. We will be losing child benefit and child tax credit. Moving forward, I don't know what we will have financially to live on. We're not the scroungers. <laughs> We, we're normal people, <laughs> like everyone else. We don't have the luxury of having the holidays, of having simple things. We're not scrounging, we are trying to have a life, and our life is so basic. We need to be able to show people that, that, yeah, the system cares and will support you and make sure that you have what you are entitled to. You shouldn't have to fight for what should be available to you. And hopefully with the Poverty Truth Commission, not just locally, but nationally, there will be some small, tiny process that we can find and put in place to improve the systems that are already there. Ideally, to make it a better system for everyone to have equal and fair understanding without the soul-destroying thought of having to ask for help. And when you do ask that someone can tell you, yes, you're entitled to have help with your rent, help with your council tax. So we ask you, can you help us change? and make our lives and everyone else's life better. That's my story. And I hope it helps you understand us, not just me, us, all of us.